For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Wars Outdoors with me, Mike. Today I'm going to give you sort of a tutorial video about how you're going to attach a sky shield or a roof protector onto your tent. Now, first thing probably to make key thing is you make sure you get the right model. Now, roof protectors are actually very bespoke made for each model, so if there hasn't been one made for your tent, the likelihood of it, not another one will fit because certain toggle points are in certain locations and the sizes are made to work. And also you don't want it to find is that it's going to rub on the material and essentially degrade the material anyway. So that's where to make sure it's, it's, it's well, purpose built for the tent in many ways uh, is the key thing. Now, it does make it a lot easier, I will say this, if you have two people doing this rather than just one, but Hal, we'll give it a go. So we'll take it out of the bag, undo kind of the main kind of ties. Now, one thing to probably use a bit of a help rather than a hindrance is certainly the wind. So it doesn't really matter to be fair if you go sort of front to back or back to front um, as such. It just makes life a lot easier if you go in the same direction as the wind. That way the wind's kind of blowing it back for you rather than into the wind. Now, if I unroll this, typically you find initially there tends to be um, two kind of sides to it. So you have a kind of foil backside uh, and then a normal kind of tent fabric tends to match the top of the actual tent itself. So that's a good indication to make sure that you're, uh, you're getting the right thing. If I unravel this now, kind of find which essentially is the front and also then the back. Yeah, normally sometimes you find there's elasticated parts of one of the ends as well to kind of dictate where it goes to. So, on these I know offhand that kind of the, uh, some of the bangle ones have a little kind of bit of branding that kind of dictates what's the front and what's the back. So you can see obviously that's kind of like a foil side, so that goes that way. Now, the question is, I find definitely it's easier to go put the front on and then go backwards rather than do it the other way. The reason is because is you can almost walk alongside the tent to move it down, whereas you've took it over the front, if, the, if it's halfway in the middle of the, of the kind of, you know, tent roof is actually, you're not going to do well in trying to get hold of it. So what I initially will do is we bring this all a bit round here. It's currently upside down, which is not a problem. So I'm going to kind of put this corner onto this point here. Typically, it tends to be like a clip system and little kind of extra tabs. So you can put that directly on to there. And this way, again, if you've got a second person to give you a hand, it's going to make the whole job a hell of a lot easier. The clips you'll also find will have sometimes an adjustment on there, so you can make sure it gets properly tight. Now obviously to start with you want as much play as you possibly can get, so that's where it's a key thing probably to make sure that um, they're fully extended out. So now we've kind of got this on. What you can always do is kind of walk it over the top. Now again, when you've got two of you, you've got equal tension either side to make this a lot easier, whereas for me, I'm not going to line out, it might be a little bit harder. But if I go directly over the top. So, got that one there. And then we'll chuck this over the top here and then almost kind of probably go down the other side, just pull it across a little bit. Once you've kind of got the main bases on, you can actually then clip each individual clip on. Now, one of the benefits of kind of having a sky shield or a roof protector, if you will, is that it does exactly what it says on the screen, on the sort of tin, really. You find that you don't have got to worry too much about kind of the UV of the sun degrading kind of the material. So it's to elongate the life of the actual kind of uh, tent itself. So a small bit of extra material costs not a huge amount. Uh, will certainly save you a lot of time kind of in the long run. So now we've kind of got that in place, we can make sure that we've got the additional kind of elasticated point here. So we'll just tension that to get it all 
nice and taut. Got an even spread. That's all it does. It sort of sits over and relies on kind of tension from the two front points to keep it in place. And then as we kind of go back, we just sort of work the clips back on and just clip down the side. Again, you've also got tension on here. So I probably would definitely clip all of the points on first and then go about trying to tension it as you want it to. Ideally, you want to get kind of as tight as possible, but having that sort of benefit of protecting the roof almost helps also the breathal layer. You've got an extra layer, kind of like a double glazing. So it works really well when you kind of twin it up with the internal kind of roof linings or uh, sky liners that you can get just to keep it all neat and tidy. Again, we'll pull that back a little bit. A bit more tension on it. And get it looking a bit sharper. So yeah, as you see, much easier with a second person, I will say, but you get the kind of the idea and it's taking that sort of UV rays, as well as how that almost reflective part. In theory, you can almost turn it upside down and have some of, some of the outer ones do, where it actually reflects the heat off to keep it a bit cooler inside. Um, but there's no reason it's not gonna do the same sort of thing with that. In fact, it's gonna sort of insulate you in many ways. So for me, it's a really nice purchase to kind of add to the basket um, for something that's gonna give you a bit more sort of lifespan out of it. You know, take certainly the, the initial kind of harshness and sort of the, the sun was stripping out the, you know, the material itself. I would say pretty much all of the roof protectors tend to be made out of polyester. If you've got a poly cotton tent like I've got here, really you don't need one, I would say. You know, the material is sort of durable enough and got a lot of knife span in it that you can get away with it. And plus, because you've almost got a non-breathable layer with the polyester, you don't really want to put it on top of a poly cotton tent because you're sort of, in essence, losing that little bit more of breathability. So, it's definitely, I would say, more orientated with kind of the, um, well, with the kind of polyester tents. Um, there's no reason you couldn't really, in theory, use it for a polycotton. Certainly if you're on sort of under tree sap or bird muck and those kind of areas, it does kind of, it will save, you know, an awful lot of mess uh, onto the tent itself. So there is kind of that argument of benefit. But for more information about kind of roof liners or sky shields, do feel free to sort of check the link below takes you to the range that we've got. Um, and obviously, like I said, they're all bespoke made for the tent to south. But any more questions or queries, feel free just to contact us directly um, via the comments box below or of course our website. So that in a nutshell is kind of how you'd quite simply and easily put on your roof protector or sky shield for your tent.